Okay, what's going on guys here? I am here with Adam Kralis, the Slovakian Molly Bloom, all right? So Adam, tell us about yourself. Who the hell are you? I'm no one. <laughs> End of the video. So guys, I almost died getting here because I had to pass. There was a freaking abandoned amphitheater I had to pass and uh, I got lost. Oh my God, guys, I need to focus now. Don't give up. I was attacked by dogs. A Slovakian babushkas were yelling at me for, you know, using my flashlight in the f***ing dark. How is this a road that Google Maps tells me to go to? God damn it. Big, big celebrities like, oh yeah. You have to hurry up, you know? Doing big celebrity things in a big shop. So anyway, so last year you made a lot of money, so... You know... A lot you, of money. You, there, there, even in the group, people were making much more money, but on the level that I am, mm -hmm. I made pretty good money, right? But um, everything comes to an end, and like there's almost no hold'em games running in Bratislava, everything switched to PLO, so I'm kind of switching also. And I'm starting studying, like yesterday I lost playing Omaha, like 4K. Is that how you study? Do you learn? <laughs> you know, like for, for <laughs> example, lessons. people in Slovakia know you as the Slovakian Molly no. Bloom, obviously, right? I've interviewed some celebrities, it was never this tough, believe me, you know. So can you tell us uh, something about this? Because it was it's massive in the poker community, these private games, you know. It just, if people like you, they don't want regs there, obviously. You, you have to be lucky, you have to give action. And I'm also not that good, to be honest. So, 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 <laughs> so I, I mean, you can win a lot of money from me. I'm not like uh, neat uh -huh. or something. So it's, it's possible to win money from me, for sure. Um, I mean, I used to be kind of good. I, 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 I had big start. I don't know if you were watching it, but I started posting in the group when I was playing like 10 or 25 NL and like in three months I made bankroll to play 100 NL mm -hmm. and then uh, then I got in touch with DTG and and I got kind of good but I, I'm, I've i been still studying, still playing football, I've been playing like semi-professional or soccer and then basically I made a few K here and there but then I started organizing my games and and that made me most money. And then I played private games, live games and... Right, so uh, let's start. So you're an online player, you're, you're a football yeah. player. How, how good did you actually make it? I'm not, I'm not sure how many leagues that Slovakia have. Did you actually play the top flight in the juniors? No, no. I, I, yeah, I, I won like almost, I don't know how many like Slovakian uh, national league trophies. Yeah, sure. And I was what was your good. position anyway? I was center back. Center back, okay. I had also like invitation to like England or some country like that. I was almost signed for contract. I had my ma uh, manager, like the guy who scouts players, and I was signed with him. But then I was injured for like three years and never really come back. I was in the spiral of being injured, the press, depression, and then I found out poker. Like uh, that little bit cured my. Um, cravings for for comp competition yes so that's how i find poker if i wasn't being injured i would probably still play football and just focus on football. you know this is su a surprisingly common i, I didn't want to say super villain origin story but <laughs> a poker player origin story is like a if you uh, know limitless. Vic, yeah limitless yeah. yeah and he was a handball player yeah. uh, around your age he got injured he discovered poker and then, uh, yeah, that's, that's but, how we got but into he it. he actually you know? was in top flights, right? In, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, he, was, he was actually in the top flight. And he was playing in Poland, I think, in the top one. Yeah. I still f feel really unfulfilled with my poker career because I still want to make more money and achieve mm -hmm. more. I, I mean, like, poker has never been for me, like, to, to have some kind of trophy or I don't care about tournaments. I just want to have fun and to max with my ability. So... Kind of want to work on now the PLO. So if anybody wants to help me with PLO, I, I now like um, bought like solver for one month. It's pretty pricey, like. Uh, oh yeah, euro. yeah. What 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 solver is that? Uh, from Jane Andes. Oh okay, okay. 
So yeah, everyone's saying Jay Nandez, Jay Nandez, the best yeah. for PLO. You know, that's like when you ask a random. Of course, Jay Nandez. What is it? What is it so special? Why did you, uh, a PLO donkey? Why did you go straight to Jay Nandez? You know, isn't there something like more reputable out there? Is he really who the is, number one? Who is there else? There may be Phil Galfon, but I, I, I don't know even how Omar Silver works. I just uh -huh. I just know this one, so I bought it. <laughs> okay, okay. I didn't do much research, to be honest. <laughs> right, so let's rewind. So obviously, you're playing, you're, you're injured, so you get this spiral. You don't have the outlet, right? So obviously, you're, you're trying to be good, but you can't. Injuries are the worst in sports. <laughs> I, I, I'm just trying to get my shit together in terms of life, like um, to have good physique, mm -hmm. doing yoga, doing meditation, but still, it's like on and off. Um, I'm trying to work on my diet. I mean, I've been vegetarian for almost four years. Wow, seriously? Yeah. Um, I want to, by the way, I want to thank you because I'm really <laughs> overweight, but I think trying to find this place, I went all the way <laughs> uphill. I got lost yeah. twice. I think, I think I lost a couple of kilos and the stress from the dogs barking, the big goddamn gorilla at the, at the front door, uh, watching every step. I was like, no, my friend really does live here. <laughs> I walked through with this family, but he does really live here. You don't yeah. have to watch me every time, you know? And uh, he was no sense of humor. I was making jokes. Uh, Manter, right? You know, he didn't have any of it. He was on yeah, the phone. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this guy's definitely a terrorist. Angry, yeah. yeah, you know, like with the phone, I definitely, you know. So thank you so much that I could lose yeah. weight. But yeah, so right. So, but let's let's rewind. So you're injured. Uh, how did you find out about poker? How did you get into that in the first place? So obviously, teachings seek teachings. That's like, how are you in this game, or how do you know this person? I always just answer teachings, teachings seek teachings. So I was like gambling <laughs> from from my early age, like from my 18. So from oh, okay, 18. Okay, from like 12 year old, you know, no. the, the 18 years uh, old machines. And I, I just learned, uh, what was it, uh, blackjack, right? And oh, okay, I was yeah. studying the strategies and... Oh, did you, did you try to count cards? No, no okay, I didn't yeah, get that mind. far. I, actually, now I know, I know a person who... Yesterday I played with a guy who, who uh -huh. played 20 hours live game. So he was at the games. He, he was at the yesterday game. He was awake for over forty hours. And well, was, they don't quit if they don't. Yeah, he's, if he's they don't Asian. make you off, you don't he's, quit, right? And he was he was betting like on matches, like two K bets up to ten K. Is he is he a card counter? Card counter? He's, he's just teaching, but he's teaching with edge. He's he's also having normal job, so he's like okay. doing normal job. But is he card counting or not? He, he was like one of the first people in Slovakia that car car. Oh, card okay. Counted. He's American uh -huh. and he is like CEO or some whatever. And he's just playing live games, sports betting, poker. He's super good in poker. He's much better than me. And How is it possible? He never, doesn't mean you suck or because he yeah, doesn't I mean, in terms play of like Omaha. Yeah, oh, Omaha. Omaha. Okay, okay. I was, I was about to say, you know. Uh, in Hold'em, I'm, I'm, I'm the best, I guess. I'm, I mean, I'm not the best, but I'm pretty good. It's so easy in Hold'em. Uh, but it's tough when nobody want to play hold'em or the games are not that big. Okay. So you're DJing, you're you're playing blackjack. Yeah, right? yeah. So I mean, I'm losing like my net worth, but that's like hundred euro, right? When you're eighteen. <laughs> but oh I, wow, I, so we, you were a football player yeah, that was I gambling. Still, this is wow. I don't, I don't think this ever happened before. <laughs> what? That a football player was gambling, you know? <laughs> every every <laughs> football player is gambling. Are you telling me young football player was gambling? No yeah, way, but, no. But I wasn't like, I was just still trying to get on top. Yeah. On top, I mean, professional contract. I wasn't ever professional. I kind of could have been professional, mm -hmm. but didn't go that road in the end because of the injuries. Um, so, yeah, and I lost all of my money, obviously. And I'm going drunk home with the taxi driver. I'm like pitching to him, like I lost again all my money in casino. And he's like, yeah, I mean, you never can beat the house, but you can learn poker. Like you can make money from poker. I'm like, sure. I mean, really? And, and the next day in the school, I haven't done anything in the school. I've just been studying the poker rules. <laughs> and like three days later, I went to my first poker tournament. I was watching uh, Phil Helmut. So... There was like uh, oh, yeah, the best, the best player, yeah. 100, 100 chips in the middle. Uh -huh. And I was like going all in with 10K chips and then doing this. <laughs> so, so that's been my start. Then I built bankroll, lose it, build, and over and over again. And you didn't have any other training besides Phil Helmuth and watching TV and stuff. So you played live at first. Yeah, I played live. Then I like made, like I was studying, watching 
Fred Owen and Andrew Nimi. Right? Oh, yeah, 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 they sure. Got, they wasn't that big at that time. Welcome to my poker vlog. My name is Brad Owen, also known as the Giraffe because uh, of my long neck. Mm -hmm. Now they're like superstars. Then, uh, what was I doing? Yeah. I was still winning, losing, and then decided like I want to go on this road on studying. So I, before COVID, I bought computer and solver and joined your group. And then DTG helped me a lot. And, and then I've been just playing, studying on uh, mm -hmm. college. Then I, I started playing like higher and making more money in private games. And, yeah. But how did you get into the private games in the first place? Was it because of your connections in life? I, I I started organizing them. Right. So how did you get that idea? Like you're playing online, you grind. I don't want to be super specific, mm -hmm. but uh, I just knew a lot of. I just had some rich friends, and I I thought it would be nice to like make online private games for them, and then I was getting players from casinos. How does it work? Do you, do you just like play with someone? You're like, oh, well, like how you we want to play? Was talking about this topic. It's Nick Airball, mm -hmm. and I, I, I know a lot of people are bitching about him, but I, I think he's really like the best mm -hmm. in terms of like. So what he's saying, like, I just joined the normal gaming casino, and next day I was on private game. Like that's the Nick Airball story, uh, and that's basically like you just kind of have to click with people. People have to enjoy your company, and basically it's the goal they enjoy losing money to you, I guess. So that's, that's the thing, you have to be fun and you have to be not that good. <laughs> okay. do, they, do they mind that this is the, this is the thing? No, actually, actually, at the start I, get, I was giving really a lot of action and even the organizer of the game like appreciated that. And now I, I don't think I'm like even like um, regular, quote unquote, uh -huh. to be honest. I'm just, you know, if the game is, I'm, I'm there. I don't know, it's, it's a little bit hard to explain, but... Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Like against some people, they mind, but not against me. So right. So imagine it's tough to get into that position, right? But yeah. So uh, imagine that people don't know. There's a lot of people that just play okay, GG poker and poker stars. A lot of people and they, don't know how how the private. Game, yeah, they have zero. Like, okay, so I know. I know you think yeah. it's normal. For yeah. me, it is. Yeah. But imagine there's zero knowledge. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of. I I actually got pulled knife knife on me. So I was in a game. I was, I was... Holy shit! Yeah, I was, Were you organizing or...? or no, no, it was in different city, but it was still in Slovakia. It was played with uh, rich gypsies <laughs> in from Ostrava and from Slovakia. And we were playing really big game and all of a sudden it's like 6 a.m. and I have like 10k stack in front of me playing three three handed and there's like 100 gypsies. Oh, Okay, yeah. <laughs> so they're very people from Ostrava are very rough people, and the the, yeah. the ro, ro, we have to call them Roma in Czech Republic. You know, it's it's, it's a sensitive topic. Um, no, they, they, no, 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 no. They don't mind this. This rich, mm -hmm. everybody is fat, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> and they are actually not say, saying like they, they're making fun of each other. And they're they're, they're like, proud of it, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And all of a sudden, like the. I forgot. They have this hierarchy, you know, and like somebody is like really, like a grand grandfather, you know, and somebody is more important, and they have to give him money. All, all the gypsies are giving them money because they are like gypsy king. They're actually gypsy kings. Yeah, Wait, gypsy! So. I thought this sounds exactly like the Sicilian mafia in the U.S. Family ties. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I knew that. I, well, this is the and thing. Uh, sorry that I'm stopping you, but there are like, we are at the poker table and there are like two or three families there. And if they are in the pot, they are always giving money back to each other. So if they're like in all in with another guy and somebody scoops, they're like, how much money you put on the flop, on the turn on the river? And he gives him back everything because they are from the same family. So it's like two or three families battling each other and me. And I was the only white guy there. And for How? some reason, I got into the game and they, they let me in. They let me play. What? How did you? Yeah. Like, why did you meet rich gypsies from Ostrava? What the? Heck? That's, that's not. That's not normal. You know that, right? Not, it doesn't happen. To, it happened to zero people yeah. in the history of humanity. I, I think. I guess I just had high, uh, not IQ, but 
emotional quotes. EQ, yeah, EQ, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah let's go. So, so I can like talk with uh, talk with people from street, talk with you know from street like uh, from rich people from street, and for some more intelligent people who are like in IT companies or so. So, and I can gamble a lot. Yeah, I'm gambling a lot while playing. Yeah, I'm giving a lot of action. So, so what, what happens? So you're really here with these families. What goes wrong? What makes yeah, the night so, being pulled at you? Yeah, so um, so I have like eight to ten k stack, pretty big game. We are three handed. All of a sudden, I have like two k. <laughs> then I'm back up, but some for some I didn't know, but they were so nice to me. Like, yeah, oh, they're so intelligent. They were touching me all the time, you know. And then when cashing out, they waited for me and asked for money. You know, not ask for money, but kind of pushed me to give them money. Like everything, even the stuff you no, came no, with? No, 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 just the percentage for protection. <laughs> and it might sound silly, but they were showing me knife before, and and I was like, you know, like I got stuck. Like, and I n never experienced that situation, and, and I was really terrified. That was like pretty rough. I didn't want to give them money, right? Because obviously, but... Yeah, it's, it was just tough. It was a tough situation. But that was extreme. Usually at the private games, it's pretty chill atmosphere and people just gambling, enjoying to gamble. Usually it's built around like a whale. Then there's some recreationals. And there is there, is there like one guy that everyone's like, oh, okay, this guy is even the catalyst for our yeah, game Yeah, because, because like even the guy, the biggest whale can bring a lot of recreational players with him. Like, a lot of recreational players don't like to play in casino and don't like why, to why, why is that? Like, what's, what turns them off? Like, like, for example, I never met Kevin. I never, from ZZZ from, yeah, from yeah. the group. I never met him, but he's like pretty studied. Like his life, he has, his life, I, I know he's also working out a lot. And his, his life is really figured out and probably has a lot of smart talk at the table. Probably he will not get drunk at the table. <laughs> no, I, yeah. I can't imagine him yeah. getting drunk. I here. never, I never saw yeah. him. I never met him. Uh -huh. But they hate it. They have this big ego. They are successful in life, and they hate to lose in the in the poker game because of their ego. Um, so, yeah, because of that, probably they just don't want to play with Rex. Ah, okay, okay. So if if you have a machine that studies GTO and. You know, I know one of the guys, Kevin from our group, he was called the, the yeah, MIT yeah, wizard, I, you know? I saw that video, that was pretty cool. <laughs> oh, by a random YouTuber, you know, uh, Bart Hansen, he was called the, the MIT wizard when Bart Hansen's student was playing against him. So he was the end boss. But yeah, obviously I can, I can see that if some, someone, they want to feel good, you know, so it's better to have someone like you talks and spazzes from time to time, yeah. knows how to gamble, uh, sometimes uh, doesn't know he shouldn't gamble. Uh, it's, <laughs> I guess it makes sense, you know, it's, it's, it's maybe plus EV, you know. Which life, now, which life do you think is better? Do you think, because this is a, this is a big thing, like if you ask Nick Erbo, Dan, Dan Bilzerian, and then you have Linus Love, right, on the, on the other pole. I think Limitless is somewhere in the middle. He's both extremely good, but he also, okay. also has the former sportsman angle. I guess, okay, if, if, if uh, Limitless is the GTO version, he gets into games with Russians. If you had to choose, would you pick the uh, really smart grinder life or the not really that good of a player, but you have the charisma and you get around these private games? Like I mean, I already chose. <laughs> I know. No, but, but if you had a choice, if you, I, if you could choose if you're smart, you have the brain for the Sims and stuff like that. You know, what, what do you think is the better actual life out of the two? Could be, could be the... Could be the, the studying guy because like if you can... If he can make a good living, he doesn't have to look for the spots. He wakes up at 8 a.m., yeah. goes to make his smoothie, breakfast, goes to gym, then he plays for six hours, then he's with family or whoever. Mm. And he doesn't have to care who he plays because he just yeah, beats everybody. Yeah, he don't care you know? about loaning people money. Yeah. He don't care about getting scanned because it's pretty... I mean, right now there's a lot of like scandals. I don't know if you're watching that. Yeah, there's always but, been, yeah, always. Yeah, yeah. But always it's pretty been. safe. He don't have to kiss anybody's ass. Even I never kissed ass. Like I'm, I'm trolling people a lot. I, like I'm not ass kisser or whatever. But people think that like. But then like, it's tough to make a lot of money, right? Like you join like, I don't know, five KNL or one KNL. Online, 
and it's pretty tough. I don't know, like in Slovakia or like in Europe, live poker is not, I mean, maybe there is, but you have to travel and you still are with a lot of regs. Um, I never been to USA, probably mm. the poker is like much different. And also like I never traveled for poker. I've been like to Vienna. I never been even to Rosvado. So I don't know, like right now I'm losing. <laughs> so so maybe I'm uh, seeking more uh, the other other stuff but uh -huh. uh, I don't know. I, I we'll see how I'll go with the PLO. I actually want to get good at PLO and study it. Like I I, I used to study there's I've still YouTube channel like with 1.5k subscribers. It was it's called Adam the Real Poker Dream. No way you're checking back. Oh my god. Um. Yeah. See the, see, see the link, no, guys. No, no, Put no. You don't need link. to see it. Let's I go. haven't <laughs> uploaded video in like two years, but it's cool to look back because I was uploading videos from 10 NL uh -huh. and then I was playing some 800 NL or like 1500 NL. So it was cool to see that progression and to have it forever. But yeah, I don't know. I want to play online a little bit PLO because I'm, I'm like always playing aggressive. I'm always in the pots and, and I don't have the... I'm not that good because even even the good PLO games they're like regs, and I can't exploit fish like that in the Omaha, and I can't like navigate in the streets in Omaha. So and in, in in the live games it must get it must get really big, right? Yeah, like it's the, big. I played uh, this the thing. I got into a private game. It was just like people from Texas. Nobody played poker, right? So it was uh, point. It, it was like hundred NL, but they could put in bomb pots and straddles. Yeah. So in, at the hundred NL, really, it was like four hundred NL. But the thing is, the PLO, holy shit! Like the, this, everyone had like ten, yeah. 10 times the buy-in. They started asking the host. And by the way, in I'm not sure what software you used, but uh, in these private games, they can talk to the host. And they can tell him, listen, we wanna, we wanna like add in bomb pots, you know? Yeah. Add in, uh, yesterday uh, I went big bomb pot. <laughs> I scooped because uh -huh. usually bomb pots are played like uh, two boards. You have four cards and two boards. And it's often like, um, oft I actually am down a lot on bomb pots, but so you have two boards, four cards, and usually it's split. But if you can scoop it, it you can win a lot of money. Isn't it just like gambling in PLO because the equities no, are no, so no, close? No, 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 no. Really? It's not. Is, it's is not. there an edge in bomb pots? It's, 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 it's edge in bomb pots. How, how come? How come? You just have to understand, like, um, like you have to kind of like see the hands, I guess. I don't know if I can so visualize to, the yeah, yeah, visualize and, the and count hands, equity. Yeah, yeah. So, hands, so yeah, okay. just to like explain, hold them is game of. Uh, frequencies yep. and oh my is game of equity so like yesterday we've been playing like 2 2 25 or 2 2 50 straddle so you open to 75 or to i don't know maybe 10 straddle so you open already to 75 30 there everybody calls and then you pot on the flop it's like already 300 and the pots are getting kind of big so yeah i guess the equity is most important because you can have the nuts on the flop and you are like four to one dog. Um, I mean, three to one dog. Or like you can be 60, 40 with nuts on the floor because like they have rep, they yeah. have flush, or there are just more cards for them. So it can get pretty, yeah, you, you, it's pain. <laughs> it's pain, yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell. So uh, how come uh, on the stream, it's not the big ones you mentioned, Nick Airball, they don't really play that much PLO. Is it just because they, they have viewers? Do you think when the cameras are yeah. off that they will be no, playing more? No, I think it's just because in USA people don't care much about PLO. Mm -hmm. There are still good games and there are good games with Hold'em. But in Europe it's kind of transitioning to PLO. I don't know if I ever make the good transition. I'm still, I'm talking like some guy who achieved a lot in PLO. I'm just playing private, <laughs> I'm just playing private games and not winning. So I can't say much about PLO to be honest. Does it actually help you? Are, are you building more? Your, uh, is there additional equity in learning and being bad in terms of getting into more private yeah, games in the future? Probably, yeah. Probably, you think yeah. so? Okay, yeah. you know, uh, so but you study now, but you also know that it will help you, you but, know. But so the difference between PLO, it seems like it's still like selective, but everybody gets a chance, you know? So there are so many 
PLO games around Bratislava. And even if you're a good reg, you can play kind of in some games. Not in the best ones. But it's not that hard to get PLO games, even if you're... Private like, ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how, how, how is it done? Like, there's so many people that have no clue, right? Yeah. How would they get into the private games? Of course, you, you know people that know people. Yeah. But you know, if, you're random, no, no. Yeah. If, if, if the Kevins, of course, doesn't need it. But, you know, yeah. people that are watching that are maybe struggling online, you know, with the bots and stuff like that. And they want to play a little bit softer games. How, how would you... What advice would you give to people? Obviously, typically, it's different maybe in Slovakia, but... What do you think is the advice to get into these private games? I would like to know, because I only got there by knowing someone. Mm, I actually been played like really big hold'em game in, in, in uh, Brno. Right. So, yeah, you are from Czech and I'm you are not Czech? in the game and I'm in the game. I so. have no idea. So how, how, do you, how do you find out about it? Do, do you put like on Facebook, hey, listen, guys, no. uh, I, send I guess me your just secret tr- private true game? True people, you know? just true people. No, I don't know. If there's any other way, you just meet somebody. You guys like a casino you, and talk. Yeah, you okay. it's like you talking to him with for three hours, and then he's like, "Yeah, I mean, I organized this game, or I know this guy. You can come with me to this game." Or just like bring up the topic of this that you want. Kinda, to kinda. Like, I guess the other person have to bring it up, but that's just, I guess. Just meeting people, just going out there. This sounds you know. exactly like dating. I want to point out, you know. Yeah. <laughs> just going, just going to. Yeah. The, to the casino, play, maybe uh-huh. be talkative, give action, maybe just like, I, I don't think there's any other way. Uh, maybe you have advice for me, and obviously, you know, when, when you come from in online, uh, it's not an issue, but uh, when you play live, like yesterday I played, played in Banco, right? You played in Banco? I played in Banco, yeah, I played the uh, Winter have, Polish something, you know? Yeah, I played there also yesterday, I wake up at 6 a.m., went there, played Omaha, and then I, I lost <laughs> again. And then I went to one tree with the trunk guy who had like, I don't know, two or three K stack. Uh-huh. He was, he yeah, was he sleeping did. throughout the hand. So I played big Omaha, soft Omaha, lost. Went to one tree, hold them at like 10 a.m. And, and the guy was sleeping throughout the hands. He was going all in. Everybody was trying to get into the hands with him. No, actually they were trying to win money from him, but nobody was playing hands against him. So what I do, I just play full range. Yeah. I played any two. I, yeah. I won like 4K, 3K pot. Yeah, 3K pot with 9-4 offsuit. Actually, this is the, uh, I, I think, like the wisdom, even in online regs, I think they have it wrong, but there was a book yeah. I reviewed recently. It's the Beyond GTO. I'm not sure if we could, it's, it's a really good book. People don't know this, don't but know. Uh, they have run the equity, they have run preflop sims. Yeah. Preflop sims on this. And actually, if someone, if you are opening up and the button is free betting too much and he's calling too much, he's being too loose, uh, like the popular wisdom is, okay, I'm going to tighten up, right? I'm going to exploit him by tightening up. Actually, no, the GTO, this is, this is not something that we're making up. Sk- skill advantage aside, obviously, when someone's fucking half asleep, <laughs> you probably might have some skill advantage, right? Uh, I, I, <laughs> I, so the hand was like... Actually, about this topic, I, I played in one game. It was like a lot of rags. It wasn't a good game, but I was actually winning there. Hold them. And there was one of the guys who was playing like really high stakes in online. And he's like one of the best hold them players in the world, actually. And he's from Slovakia. And, and he was playing optimal. But he wasn't winning most money because he was playing like three ends in three hours. Yeah. Because he's playing optimal. But uh-huh. I think live poker is not about playing optimal. I mean, you can if the action is super good. You can and you will win, but you yeah. will not win the maximum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you kind of have to exploit a lot in live poker. At least that's my opinion. You're going to lose more and win more. No, it's not. It's actually like if, if you look at the same, I look at the book. It's actually proven. Yeah, if someone's playing too loose, your reaction uh, uh, is in, if you node lock and GTO, you should be playing looser than normal to cut because if you play the same you don't capitalize on this mistake right? he doesn't fuck up but he's playing very suboptimal so that means that uh, he's playing badly that means you can play more hands because someone will have lower ev behind you you know yeah yeah so, so, so you're playing with this guy yeah, you so, make the money and yeah how did you how did you did you learn this naturally because this is very counterintuitive yeah. like if you ask any online play, as you said that you know someone who's tightened up how did you like find out that it's wrong so about the yesterday's game, yeah. like he was like opening every hand. He was like getting it in with whatever. 
and people were just folding, waiting for ace king. <laughs> yeah. And I'd sit there and I'm like, I'm playing every hand. I'm down like 300 early, of course. And they think you're a fish as well, right? Because yeah, you yeah, play yeah. every I, hand. I play every hand, but then I got into the spot and I stack him. But, but the funny thing about the hand was like, I had nine four off. He opened to like 20, got three calls. I call with nine four off. The flop is three, four, seven. I bet 100 or he calls. On the turn, I bet like 200. Jack is turn, so nine, three, f uh, three, four, seven, check. I bet like 150, he calls, and the river is check. And he looks at these cards, and he sets all in for like 1K. And then he started like doing this, he gets cards to his hand and like started <laughs> doing this, and I'm like, what? I'm just trying to catch the card. <laughs> 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 yeah. It's like the TikToks when they flush the naked one. You know, it's like, flush. Was, it, was she naked? Did and I then, see And that? then he marked the card. He marked them. And I'm in and I'm, I'm actually a tough spot, right? Because uh -huh. I'm like third pair. And he marked them. And like Florman comes and he's like, <laughs> is the hand dead? And I'm winning? Like, because it was kind of a big pot. Yeah. Uh, for the game, obviously. And he's like, no. Give him his card back. He can't mark his cards um, because he's in all-in situation and whatever the ruling was. But it's bullshit, though. It's not bullshit because really? it wasn't like in the mark. He just threw it to the board. Oh, basically. okay, okay, okay. So then he started again <laughs> grabbing his card, and at this point, it's the hand is like ten minutes for sure. And I'm like, fuck it. I'm just, I'm just. It's probably not the morally best, but I like, I don't care because it's not. I'm not exploiting a friend in a private game, it's just in casino and it's his own mistake. And I'm like, okay, I think I'm gonna get the result. So again, he's flashing and now I see cards. And I saw a queen. So, so I kind of like, fuck, what he had with it? Like I saw queen three, queen four, queen seven. So I, did, I couldn't, I wasn't sure, like half the table already know the cards. They're like scared because they don't want him to lose money. So I'm already leaning more towards call, but then he starts showing cards. So I'm like, how can I, how can I get to know his card? So I like, hmm, okay, I show you one, you show me one. So I show my pair. <laughs> He's like, huh? we show cards? <laughs> and he showed me both of cards and everybody is like, <laughs> and I'm like, call. <laughs> I tip tip dealer hundred euro from that. <laughs> hundred euro tip for the dealer. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Funny, guy. but I had better gifts in my life. <laughs> it haven't been the best, but maybe if I did morally wrong, I got is punished. It, there, there, from that's that the, that's the, the question, back. right? So obviously in a casino, yeah, I mean, screw it. He's he, he's playing there, right? If you were dry, I don't think he would take pity on you either, right? Yeah. But uh, when you play the private games. I always had like uh, this like in the back of my head because I'm invited there, right? And this is by far the best game that I can be in, right? And I'm winning 20 big blinds per hundred, you know, this what happens in these private games. And sometimes I was like worried because sometimes the people, even online, they start like noticing, oh, this, this guy's winning. He's like, you know, did you ever have this feeling that like morally I should not push as much in one session or do you just like try to maximize no, the winnings? No, yeah, I had... I, I, Actually, that's the good thing I did. I wasn't, like, when I got the shot in the private game, like, the best in Bratislava in terms of Hold'em, I actually came there and give action. I, I came there, I was start winning 3K, and I'm, shit, this is not good. Were well, you thinking because it's like, you will not yeah, get invited yeah, yeah. back. and I played every hand, I lose it, and then I was getting into games and again, again, again. So, I think a lot of... The first session is what matters. Is, is, that, yeah, is it true? Yeah, like to straddles, to Mississippi, like get it in with flash draw. When you make tight fold, never show. There's like a lot of mistake that people do. And then people get triggered like the whale when, yeah, yeah, just don't do that. Like if you make tight fold, don't brag about making tight fold. I've seen it. That's like the most common mistake also. So yeah, I don't know. I also give action. So the players come to play in my club online. So that was probably a strategy also, but other than that, I don't know. You just have to, people have to like you, I guess. That's all. But yeah, be likable and don't be in it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> how, does, how does it work with Drake, by the way, in this? Do you, do you charge like extra to, to the people or is it comparable to like other sites? Mm, for my online game? Yeah. 
for the games we played, the rake was pretty low, mm -hmm. to be honest. And wasn't like any, yeah, it was like normal side. It should should have been higher, to be honest. Mm -hmm. It was like poker stars or GG or I don't know what. Yeah, yeah because the, the people don't give a fuck really if they if they go there. They of course, of course. So many they don't even notice that there is rake. Like oh, it's whatever. But, like, but it started with like a super good game, then. Some players were dropping off, so there you have to bring some other players, um, even like Rex or someone. Like uh, it slowly started to getting harder. Now the game is at the mo maybe it will start running again, but at the moment it's not running so often. So, so how does how does how does the financing but I, work? By the way, I just but I but I like there's like we play like at least two hundred games, like or two hundred games, or even more than two hundred, which is like a lot. Hmm. So we played like three times a week or even four times in a year or like in 13 months. So that's, that was pretty good. Good. <laughs> so I was just playing, getting drunk, going to club. So that was my life last year. Just, just this. It does sound terrible now that you mention it. Like if you compare it to the uh, to the M it's MIT gonna Wizard, catch up. it's gonna catch up. The M we, MIT Wizard lifestyle. Now that you mention it, like you know, uh, doing doing yoga and working out and being at the casino for uh, eight hours, then studying for three hours, then uh, having to have the mental game. You know, yeah, it's probably in the long run better. And you're getting because better. It's as catch well, up. You, you do shit. Yeah. I was also in the pride games. I was always getting drunk. I was winning, but sometimes it's like. Sometimes it happens, like, there was one game where I was losing 13k, uh, being super drunk, and that was actually in Brno. But yeah, it, it's, you, I always, at least my, even if I'm a gambler and have a little bit addictive personality, one thing I can do, I can reflect on myself pretty mm -hmm. good. So, like, even now with PLO, I'm not bringing bad luck, like, I'm, not saying I'm unlucky, I think I'm not that good. I'm not trying to throw it that I'm losing on, on the variants. And also when I was doing too much alcohol, I cannot always reflect on that and, and change it. So at least I have good reflection about myself. That's like one talent I have. I think it's the main talent in poker, honestly. Yeah. You know? People are like, like even you. Yeah. Re remember that session, right? <laughs> yeah. You were pretty blindfolded, like you. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, to I don't know. to, to you, tell you the story, guys, to tell you the story, uh, basically, I've been playing cash games, right? Then my coach uh, retired. He went to PLO, stupid PLO, stealing people, you know? So I didn't have like proper studying for, for a couple of years. And, you know, back in the day, like if you take even four or five years ago, you could basically play with zero losing months. You could play a low variant style, and I actually saw some YouTubers quitting the same thing. <laughs> and then I got a, like a coaching session with Adam. I was like, guys, what's going on? I'm playing four tables on these American apps, and I'm only winning at three big blinds per hundred, right? Which you might think is not that bad, but if you actually table select and you low table and you are finding apps, that's terrible, right? If you were winning in a, one of your games at even six big blinds per hundred in one of these private games, you're a fucking donkey, right? You, yeah. <laughs> you're, not, you're not good. So these guys came in and uh, they were like, oh, this is terrible. Like, what, what, what the fuck? You never free bet Queen Jack suited? In the big what do you mean? You know, and it's like, no, guys, this is good. This is, this is fine. This is good. <laughs> Look, I'm going to get free big blast. What are you talking about? You know, and then like, I fucking, they, they showed me, oh, is it now? Okay, let me show you the statistics. Okay, you free betting 70% less than you're supposed to. Yeah. And the Rex aren't idiots anymore. Uh, do you think they don't have the charts that are for free everywhere online? Yeah, so awareness is the most important. But I think this is the nature of poker, isn't it? Like, I'm giving example of people that play poker. When they want to gamble, they go into the pit games. Because poker is a game of delusion, I feel. It's not gambling, gambling. But it's more like a, about the delusion of yourself about the lack of self-awareness. This is why we have a game in the first place. Yeah. That's my theory. What do, you, what do you think about this? Because I actually know all types of scammers, to mm -hmm. be honest. Like, I'm, I can get into that. I know why they're playing, what's the reason, some just to have fun, someone that win money. But uh, it's just to people... I notice it's people that just don't like to be at home. They have st like the people that are playing with are super successful people. So they have business. They're going to work out. They're going to play tennis. They're spending with uh, bitches. 
like I mean like uh, other girlfriends from apart from their wives then and then they're like uh, going to poker and spend time there because they have to do something all the time and there are some players who actually uh, it's like 0.01 percent were like super rich and don't care about winning then there are some who are trying to win and then they don't care and start losing and there are just who are trying harder um it's a lot of lot of types of fish or whales but what sort of gambler is attracted to poker oh. compared to uh, pit games because my theory is that poker is a game of delusion and like the hardcore gamblers uh, they jump into the pit game jump into the the so, slot machines you know so so the gamblers want to win money quick and fast and that's starting to become a problem with holdem because it's tough to get at, even in in the big pot right or like having some per, some equity and that's why people are transitioning to omaha because you can quickly push money in the middle and being like 60 40 underdog and still win often so oh so the, the gamblers they want to push that. yeah, yeah. They, they're impatient they want to then there are some gamblers who are just bad i don't know it's whatever yeah but pit games gambler some some people if they just play the roulette they'd be better off but they, on the roulette you're losing money really fast obviously right even if casino don't have that edge um yeah i'm a gambler myself I kind of want to change it, so even I play pit games. What do you? What do you uh, this was the example of what I was giving, you know. Because in poker, yeah, of course, gamblers they want to go to PLO, but in poker, if you don't have the self awareness, it it gives you the opportunity to think that you're better than you actually are, right? Yeah, poker, I never. I, that's the ego, right? Yeah, this I, the, it's an ego game, but it's tough to really gamble as much as you can in in the other games. I think we we're saying that you need to learn how to count cards, you know, and just play. Uh, play blackjack and count cards because they're oh, uh, it's terrible grind. <laughs> I don't know if you, there's uh, actually you you saw the documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen I've seen it. Uh, yeah, it's terrible grind. You have to travel. You have to hide. It's terrible. I wouldn't want to be count counter to be honest. I mean, I you, you get to wear disguises and you know. It sounds uh, good. Sounds good. <laughs> Only good thing maybe about it is it's that money if you you can make, but it's tougher than poker I think in terms of like lifestyle. Lifestyle is pretty shit, right? Yeah, you have, you have to, to tr- you have to rotate the casinos, rotate your disguises as I, well. I don't like to travel, to be honest, that much. Really? How ca- I, I've been traveling a lot and mm-hmm. I love Bratislava so much that I'm just happy to be here, to be honest. Well, so, like, by the way, let's, let's, let's give it, you know, hi guys, first time we're here. You know, if you want to visit the great city, well, look <laughs> no further. I do, boy, do I have a place for you. Come to Bratislava and play some live games, especially if you have some money. And here to talk about it more is Adam. So Adam, you know, what's so great about Bratislava, this amazing city? Sell it to the people. (laughs) Uh, You can play poker here with me. If you have a lot of money and don't know how to play poker, you're welcome. No, but it's actually like compared to London, actually Bratislava is not that cheap, to be honest. Uh, but the thing is that Prague is cheaper. I didn't know that. What was, is it? Yeah, I was there in December. I'm staying uh, in an in a eight euro hostel tonight. So eight euro? Eight euro, yeah, for night. Eight? Eight. Oh my god. So that's pretty cheap, right? And it's two euros but, twenty for a okay, large go, beer on top. If, Czech beer. Yeah, but if you go to hotel, you're paying like one fifty, two hundred a night to the best hotels. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Um. So you have here everything, kind of. It's not that big. Mm-hmm. It's not that many tourists. And you have big chill here. You feel safe. Like, I go from the game with having 10k in my pocket. I, I don't care. If some, I don't believe somebody's going to rob me. So it's pretty safe. And you have everything. You, have, you can go party even now. Today today's Sunday, right? Yeah. So you can go party. You can go drink. You can go to cinema. You can go to massage. You can go to... We have pretty good nature here, also. Like, too too good. I got lost in oh, it right now. You know, yeah. if you um, don't recommend it after yeah. that. The celebrity I'm supposed to interview, he's not coming out. I was escorted by a big security guard, and he's waiting for me here. He's big, big gorilla. 
Oh my god, I, if I, if, seriously guys, this is the most dangerous thing I've ever done. And and everything is here and yeah. we are not that bullied by the police right? mm -hmm. and the laws. So I guess everything's fine here for now. Come visit Breakfast Star uh, <laughs> and play the private games with wow. us. Especially if you have money. Don't be too good though, especially yeah. in PLO, okay? And I was learning still, so uh, only mid and lower players I have, allow. I have some, I have one good session in PLO, it's up 14k. It's actually my biggest, I ended up up like 10k, but I mean, I can, yeah, I have to figure out some things. I, I was, I get, I get much better because like in PLO you have, like you, you jumping from Hold'em to PLO. Yeah. And you get like two pairs on the flop, like bottom two or like middle two pairs. And you think like, oh my God, so good. But you know what, it's happening all the time. And you just lose money to the sets, to the straights, to the flushes and shit. Like, a lot of people are living on the edge in these games, to be honest. Why is that? Like, I don't know. Is it's, it, it's soft or? It seems soft, but in the reality, it's not that soft. And in my opinion, at least what I'm figuring out, also, there are some good games, like super, super soft, but super swingy. Because if somebody comes and he's like the the guy who don't cares about money in, in Omaha, it's you can get... It, it's tough to explain, but I mean, I, I'm, I'm as of now fine with my bankroll and I still got some money, so I'm <laughs> still good, but <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty aware about my bankroll. So yeah. if I would go down, I'm not like the guy who is going to be on the edge. Like I would jump to the lower games, for example, even to the casino games on online to play. Like I can make money online on one, two. So you can make kind of good money from that. So yeah, I'm pretty aware about it. Do you think the people that play those hustler streams? Yeah. Do you think they roll for them? Rolled for them, or they? No, no. There are a bunch of players who are like playing with two binds to their names. You know, like even in our games, like the professionals were like having like twenty k bankrolls or like thirty k bankrolls, and you know whatever can happen with some downswing. But, but this, this, this sounds are, insane to yeah, an online regular, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, but, should these days but, online with the swings you play with hundreds, but you know, the swings should be should be low. If you're good, so and also it's live poker, so it should be should be lower. But there are some players who who are winning all the time, so the games must be good. But you have to be also good and don't care about money. If you're playing with scared money, that's the worst thing. Yeah. Because you're gonna try not to lose. You're not gonna win the maximum, and eventually you're gonna lose. I never talked with people about money. To be honest, I don't mm -hmm. care how much money somebody has. I I don't talk about my money. I, I found it somewhere on YouTube, like the Chinese people or like, like old culture of Asian people. They have this rule to not talk about money because ah. it's like giving power away or something like oh, that. Oh, right. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, they're just degens. Degens think <laughs> degens, you know, like you're going to make it or break it, you know, like it's, I don't know, <laughs> either make it or break it. It's the album of uh, Tupac, no Tupac, uh, 50 Cent. Oh, really? Like, I don't, get, I don't know, you know. Get rich or die oh, trying. Oh, get rich or die trying. Okay. So, so I guess. That's... <laughs> Is it like a renaissance for poker? Because, you know, there, there was a time when poker seemed dead. And, you know, it was all online and it was declining. But now it seems like it's going all the way up. And with these yeah, live games, with the streams, because of the, you know. Because of the vloggers, right? Vloggers, streams, you know, everything's going up. And... It seems like we're actually glorifying degens, you know, like... Yeah, uh, that's amazing in my opinion, because <laughs> like there comes a, like right now I saw the... So, uh, Alan Keating, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. He's losing yeah. like millions. Wait, where does he get his money, by the way? Like, is he a hedge fund? Is he a hedge fund man or do you think I he's think like... I think he's like super rich. Okay. Super rich, like he just don't care about the money. But then there are the guys like uh, now on the lodge, there's like a new guy who lost like half million in his first session and... And everybody is just loving him. So that's good. People showing love to these people. Like, at least we are not like back in the day, people would. I, I love old school poker. I, I, I'm i playing poker because of the high stakes poker. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Everything like three our, our generation, I think it's like, it's the same. Yeah. All of us, I think. Yeah. And I think they're a little bit 
I don't know if that was like that, but people were making fun of whales. I don't yeah. know. I, I, yeah, I definitely think so. Yeah. Like the uh, the guy, the French guy, what was his name? Super millionaire and all the games. Oh, Guy Liberté. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cirque du Soleil organized. So, so, like, so yeah. people were like bitching about him because he had like more accounts on Poker Stars. Uh -huh. Like it's unfair, you shouldn't be doing that. But he lost like 20 million <laughs> online and people are bitching that he's like multi-accounting. I uh -huh. don't know what was the reason, maybe some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also like people don't understand like the I also noticed like watching Hustler highlights and people are commenting about like why is that so unprofessional to do this and and you shouldn't be talking like that and you shouldn't grab cars like this and people just don't understand how the live games are and like maybe I also know like people owe me money because uh, they don't want their family to see that they lost gambling so they're waiting to get some other money right so there's a lot of like aspects to this so i don't know do you think there's a lot of debt going around nick erbo got scammed by a lot of mm -hmm. people you know he's like giving money to every guy like to fishes to re i think to fishes like because okay so how do live games works people come there with 1k 2k in cash because that's the amount they're willing to lose yeah but then they're starting to get loans and like what, what well, I, how come they get to them so easily it seems because they're 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 getting loans like and there's all about like the we're trusting each other and you're gonna send money after the game or like give it so i was at one game and there was a guy he came with 500 euro just to like have a quick quick game he came for like a few minutes few hours like maybe oh so he came with 500 euro after his like uh, hockey training and and he was like, yeah, I'm just come to look, say hello, guys. And yeah, maybe I'm going to play. Okay, I'm going to play. We played till 12 a.m. Like, it's 2 p.m. or I don't know, yeah. 12, 12 a.m. the other day. He's down 16.5K. And then he proceeds to lose, like, his bank account in the next two weeks. He gets on the biggest Omega tilt, like, ever. He was in every game. Losing 10k, 5k, 7k in every game, and he was like winning or losing always like one or two k. So it's like from the Molly game, sure. the guy who was on the tilt was playing yeah. for a few days. So I, I I know I saw that in in real life. Oh wow! Like he lost like his life savings in two weeks. The, uh, did, I don't know. If did, did he pay them out or in the end? Yeah, he did. He okay, so, well, he, he honored the bet. He the honored, end. honored, of course. But I, I, I was always concerned. I always cared about. But there's not much because of the people are greedy. They want to make money. It's all one thing that I stopped liking about it. Like people are just greedy. People are scamming. People are fake. Um, it's, it's I guess the nature of the, of the yeah the, uh, the, the game I did play when someone started like losing it, there was like two or three buy-ins really quickly the host was like oh call me you know so they, they had to actually call him it was online private game mm. you had to call him and you had to like ask him like really are you sure you know mm. is uh, I mean you loan people but you don't want to be uh, stiff right you don't want to be have a finger and try yeah. to chase debts because then what the hell do what the hell do you do if someone doesn't pay right besides nothing. going on twitter and complaining yeah nothing like it's not like in the 90s where you came with a gun to someone uh -huh. just the risk you're willing to take and if they're going to honor their word or not well, uh, if someone doesn't pay do you try to like tell the other hosts or do you just like you know happen to me i'm taking it as a as a write off and i just don't invite him back yeah i don't i don't like to talk I, I'm trying to stay away from this like uh, mm -hmm. so if they scam me like if somebody asks I, I tell them but it's not like I'm talking everywhere about it all I'm right just, it's, not, it's not it's not worth it as a host yeah, is it I just take, why, why would you why would you take the trouble and yeah. then people will think oh if it happens to me yeah. and you know I, I, take, I have a bad run I, I have to wait a couple of weeks then, I just take yeah, the loss yeah. and yeah. yeah that's right well but, I, I would do but the, it's same, the worst actually, yeah. it's the worst feeling when when you you get scammed like this for your mental health it's like because if you lose at the game it's okay if you lose at the casino it's okay but when you lose like money like this by loaning to people or like trusting them with your money that you trust it yeah it's, it's the worst feeling and it's really tough, tough sometimes you know they have the money they just don't pay it you know yeah, could be option yeah could yeah yeah i, I 
I, I have so many stories about it, but I just don't want to say no, that. No, let's, let's, not, let's not talk. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about the hypothetical. So, <laughs> hypothetically, uh, there's, there's examples we can talk about. Tom Dwan. Okay. What's your take on Tom Dwan? I actually Owen money? am watching everything about Tom Dwan. Yeah. So, what happened to him? He was giving action in the, in the Chinese games. And I heard he lost like 20 million pots and shit like that. So he got, he got on the, I guess, big downswing. and In the Chinese games? In the Macau games. Macau right? games, right. And, and, he, and he just lost it all, like playing super big, like unrealistically big. Like if you are playing 10, 10 20k blinds, just crazy. So uh, there has been this dispute with Jungle Man, but it's like own, 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 Owing him from the heads up challenge, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, there's been there's and been the, way more now recently. Yeah, yeah, true. But f I know only like really inside about Jungle Man because he's been talking about. Mm -hmm. But I guess like Tom Wan has this idea that he kind of get him into good games, which even Jungle Man admit. And I guess that's like this opinion, like he's. He this doesn't owe him money because I get you into the game and you made like I don't know how many millions. So I don't know. I will always uh, support Tom One. <laughs> my oh, 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 I see that, that that he got he got Jungle Man into into private games because of yeah. and he still hasn't uh, paid him from the from the heads up dirt challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. It's ah, okay. So yeah. So he sees he can't say it publicly though, Tom. Right? We can. Yeah. This is only speculation, yeah. right? We people can't... are, but people are talking a lot about him. Hmm. I don't know what happened to him. <laughs> Nobody knows. Like, even he was like off the grid, right? Because he was like uh, being a big star in poker, and then nobody knew about him like for a couple of years. There were jokes that he was locked in the basement. Yeah, of, but you know, but he in what? some interviews said like like there was just unrealistically good games, and I I don't know. Like I just didn't want to say anything. Like he was just. You just don't want to say anything. So it was like four years offline, right? Not talking about anything. And he was just playing the really good and games. And now the games are like more well known to the people. And yeah, he talks a bit more. Why do you think he's coming back into the limelight? He started playing, uh, he started going on the streams and stuff like that, you know? What do you think a uh, player that's somewhat in the opposition, he was playing super sick, you know, um, easy games. I know he was... He lost it all, but he can easily get staked in those. Yeah. What made him come back into the public view? If you could guess. I, I think it was just good games that bring him there. Like, just, he, he again, like, go to the game and makes a new record of the biggest spot in, in televised poker history. Right, so it, it, I mean, he got games with, like, Mr. Beast. Yeah. And in those, uh, you know, I mean, totally. It's is, is, that, is that why he just, he just sees it as a good game? I'm going to go? Yeah, I think it's, oh, just, okay. it's a good spot. So he's just jumping there. And I don't think he cares that much about his public image, to be honest. So the uh, so back in the day, the only really high stakes soft ones you could get behind closed doors. Do you think that streams we're seeing at Hustler, are they actually like the, the big games that are actually played? Or is they're, it still like... much bigger and better games because... That's what I was uh, like, thinking. Why so, is so he just, back just to explain my situation, I don't want to sound as like some super high stakes pro, but... Uh, there is a gate here that you have to go and a bouncer. I want to point it out. It's a point. Like uh, for Slovakian standards, for Czech standards, for European standards, you can in one game win like five uh, paychecks. Yeah. So that's all. I'm like, you can win in the games I play 5k a night sometimes. So it's not like I'm some super whatever, yeah. but you can make money. That's all. And I'm living in pretty good place, renting it. I don't have super high amount of money, but yeah. But these games, the super high stakes, yeah, we haven't seen like, because there are, people are not drunk even in those games. They care about their public image. And in the private games, like people do so much, they get on cocaine, on, on alcohol, and the stakes get bigger, gambling got bigger, and they don't want to, they have probably businesses, families, they don't want to be seen like that on the internet. I yeah. Guess, so. so that's why the, the behind closed doors, it's always going to be yeah, bigger. I guess, the, yeah, we're never going to see the like true ultimate gambling, to be honest, because the people don't care about the attention that they get from, from the poker world.
unless they are like Leon, you know, Leon Sokernik from the, yeah. <laughs> uh, he said, oh, I was drunk. I'm not going to pay the one million that I owe. And he got sued for it, you know. Really? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a couple of years ago, it was a story. He just refused to pay. I'm not sure how it ended up, by the way, guys. It's real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, but there was he's, he's making promotion for his casino, so. It's po- of, ah, yeah, it's possible. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe. A lot of people, like that, lot of people have <laughs> some. Like even the, the new guy, Eric Person. Yeah. You showed the double finger to Phil Helmut. Like we thought this well you know but in the end he just owned casinos and he's just making promotion to himself oh so is, is this why person keeps playing and he yeah. actually he, he's being bombastic but he's losing money but he yeah. knows what he's doing so it's a, just like yeah. in molly's game you know the the hedge fund guy that wanted to get people oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know? <laughs> so i think it's more about that to be honest some yeah okay last topic before we uh, ended with the shout outs to the group if you could compare the movie Molly's game, okay? Because obviously you are the Slovakian Molly. <laughs> uh, how much of it is actually true if you look at that movie and compare it to real life? So we play like again for S- Slovakian standard, super super high, right? Mm, we're playing like one two twenty five, one two fifty, but uh, private games doesn't matter blinds, right? Yeah. So it's the same, basically. It's different. Tipping culture because we are raking the games, which is supposed which shouldn't be happening, but people are raking the games. Um, but it's pretty much the same. There, are, there are just the whales, and there are like pros in the games and recreationals, and people know about the game, and it's pretty good to get into that game. And it's pretty pretty much the same, to be honest. They did kind of good job with with showing up how how it was. It's it's almost unrealistic um, for the host to make a game and not be playing in it. Usually the host is in the game and he's kind of have to be action player. A lot of games got that because host was raking the game and he was playing in it, but he couldn't keep up with the losses. Oh yeah, okay. Make it up by the rake because host was the main attraction. Um, a lot of politics, it's pretty much the same, but lower, lower, lower stakes, not like 50k buy like, but buy one. Yeah, we, 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 I know it's, it's a great city, but we still are in Bratislava, yeah. this, is, this isn't the US, this isn't California. Yeah, like like yesterday, Slovakia. someone lost at the game 10k, mm. a lot of money, I think. For, for Slovakia, for sure, that it is a lot of money. But yeah. maybe will some USA guy will watch it and... Will be nothing for yeah, <laughs> this is nothing, you know. Yeah, so if you want to see what Adam does, well, no, not anymore, it's, it's running only a couple of times. Just watch the movie and you know, imagine that it's uh, Molly's body with uh, Adam's face, and there you go, you yeah. know. <laughs> so, no, right now, I'm just figuring out what to do with my life. What yeah. if I will proceed this Omaha, if I will be playing private because I actually don't even care much about private games. If I I, I, I still want to do poker, to be mm-hmm. honest, but if I go to Omaha or if I play online, some like clubs or whatever, yeah, I, I'm, I'm in transitioning area. I don't know what, what will be next. I think a lot of people are, I think, especially with online, you know, we get these super users coming out and people switching to live poker and trying to find our private games, gambling in streams, you know, switching games and stuff like that. It seems like this is pretty much the common thing that people are trying things out. You know, here, that's right? what I'm saying, like getting Something into like the that, good games, know? it's it's the biggest yeah. skill. I was actually watching Chain on the stream and he asked the chat, like, guys, what is like the one thing you want to get good at, like in poker? What would be like superpower in poker? And everybody was like, work ethic, uh, studying, uh, I don't know, all this bullshit. And like, Chainan is like, hmm, interesting. Nobody texted getting into the good games. <laughs> That's the most important thing, right? <laughs> to be in the good games and then make most out of it. So, yeah. Good luck with everyone. Good luck with your poker dreams. Most of you is probably not going to make it. I, I don't think I make it. What is making it though? If, if you have a good yeah. lifestyle, right? If you, if you quit poker right now, I mean, was it really time lost in your no, mind? No, it's always going to be plus EV for me because I met so many people. I have so many opportunities in life. Um, so many uh, like people who are doing so great in their lives. 
and uh, I had so much fun. Like I, I probably blasted a lot of money on some dumb shit, but yeah, I guess I'll be all right. Right. Thanks, thank you guys for watching. Uh, by the time you see this, because there's so much cool stuff, it's gonna take maybe a month to edit this, but it's gonna come out. Don't worry. So we were here. We, we should show the newspaper, like they show in no? on the, on the in couch. <laughs> yeah, they show the. Oh, this is the newspaper, the, oh the casting God. couches. So it is. What is it? March yeah. 2024. So now we. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're watching this in May. And, uh, uh, you know, Adam is a PLO wizard that makes trillions. So, so now we're going to make uh, the, <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the, the video. Let's go